say about his opponents? Let's send it over to Jane Slater with the answers. Thanks, Kay. Starve your distractions, feed your focus. It's a message that hangs in the Saints locker room and one head coach, Sean Payton, lived by when asked about those Marcus Peters comments. He didn't bite. He said, in fact, he's not a fan of seafood or gumbo, more of a steak guy. He also was incredibly complimentary of Peters, saying they almost drafted him but went with left guard Andrews Pete instead. Peyton isn't going to give anyone any bulletin board material ahead of the NFC championship game. Instead, he's busy collaborating with the quarterback who helped him win the last championship game in 2009. And it's an advantage that Breeze addressed when I brought it up. We've had 13 years together. So something can come up through the course of the game. And we can midstream adjust very fast. And we can reference something that happened this season or reference something that happened 10 years ago based upon a look that we're seeing or just a situation. And I think that's unique. Breeze turned 40 on Tuesday, and aside from the surprise party that his wife planned after that win over the Eagles, he said it was business as usual. He went home and had dinner with the family. He enjoyed cake and read bedtime stories to his kids. But he said this runs a little bit more meaningful because his children are so involved. Recently, he asked his son his favorite thing, and he said going to the training facility with dad. Okay? We love those kids and the Saints. Thanks so much, Jane Slater. Everyone expecting the Saints home field advantage to play a big part in the Sunday's game, especially because Breeze has been pretty much unstoppable in playoff games at the Superdome. Undefeated, in fact, 6-0 in his career. Those are some intimidating numbers, I'd say. Yeah. Speaking of intimidation, let's talk intimidating factors heading into Sunday's NFC Championship. I'm here in Peter, but I'm thinking Kyle. Um, yeah, I think it's a great thought. I, 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 that's a great thought, Kay. I would look, um, I'm looking, thinking of some names right now, like Ferrigno and Tony Atlas and uh. Schwarzenegger. These are guys who would just flex for a living. Their mm. job was to <laughs> flex on people. Not the expression we use now, we flex down and we dunk down. Literally flexing their muscles, and that's Michael Thomas. I mean, I think he flexed on the Eagles about 30 times. They could do nothing for him. I'm looking at Michael Thomas as the most intimidating guy, especially... And the Marcus Peters thing is fascinating because we like the personality and we like the playmaking and everything. But if you want to talk about an underdog, I think Peters is a huge <laughs> underdog. And never mind the Patriots, Peters should sell a shirt that says bet against us because he's going against a guy who's 6'3", 212. We keep showing the one play where he got isolated and they had a big play and everything. I mean, do you know Thomas dropped 200 yards on them last time? Ooh. 200. He didn't have a nice one for 212. Man, that's hard to do. It, it's really hard to do against a team that's got some great, really expensive players. I think the most intimidating sight you could possibly see if you're a Rams fan is Michael Thomas, double bicep, because he did it to you again. Double crosses, double bicep. He, he's, he's religious, and he's flexing, and it's the one thing I do not want to see more than any other against, against those Saints right since now. We, we, since we talked about making all this off-the-field money, yeah. maybe Michael Thomas should have a shirt that says, Marcus, you don't want this smoke. Is okay. that what it is? Yeah, yeah, you, you don't, don't want, want it? You don't, you don't want this smoke. I think he does now. Get it to him. Something with gumbo, too. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Last week, Sean Payton made a lot of news for bringing in the cash and the Lombardi and using that to motivate the players. That was actually done in 1975 by John Madden. $39,000 was the bonus for a playoff win. John Madden got it in cash, had, right. had armed guards come in, and like Sean Payton went back to 1975 <laughs> and knew someone else's, reinvented it, huh. got the armed guards and did it, and got the team going. Sean Payton is a master motivator. What I am most intimidated by, if I'm a Rams fan right now, is that Sean Payton is going to have this team on 11 from the very oh. get-go. Guys, in the past two years, he's done everything from place mouse traps around the team facility and say, hey, trap game, be ready. They bump into a mouse trap. That's a true story. Yes, he'd place empty gas cans around to show veterans, you still got gas in the tank. <laughs> and my favorite, they were 0 and 4. He just brought in a giant wagon full of instruments. And it was supposed to resemble an empty bandwagon in 2007. Said, you're 0-4. Everyone's off the bandwagon. Who wants to get back on? Mm. He is about to get this team amped up to 11. And that's the most intimidating thing. <laughs> Sean Payton has the uncanny ability to go into this bag of tricks of motivational tactics and get players to be better than they are. He finds a way to strike a chord with you emotionally to give you, if you play at a 10 always, he'll get you to that 11. I can't wait to see how the Saints and Rams both come out here because both their coaches are bastard motivators. Sean Payton is the best in the game. Captain Literal, man. Tour also remember during that first Super Bowl run, he had the bat. 
carrying a bat around. I mean, uh, uh, carrot top. <laughs> crazy props. Goes. A lot of props. Prop comic. <laughs> prop coach. <laughs> I can call me Batman. What a prop closet. I yeah. Think, Part, do you roll crazy. your eyes at all if yeah. you see like literally a gas and mouse traps around our? I mean, or is it, that? It, 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 it depends on how long you've been with the coach, right? Okay. Because I've seen every gadget, every like trick in a book from Rex and from Brian Billick, and uh -huh. you know, so it's like if you're a veteran, you just kind of go along with it. You should always see the, the new guys. They're all in. You Ooh, know, so are these mouse traps set? <laughs> I mean, come on, that's a hazard. Yeah, trap game, game well, I know. Of course they're set. Is the I, cheese? The schedule is set in April. It's a trap game. <laughs> if I'm one of those bubble guys, I'm going to go ahead and on. touch it. I, listen, I need... <laughs> ah, I can't yeah. touch it. Yeah. Touch it. I'm a the and rap sheet says you're questionable. I are. Uh, <laughs> both, both intimidating options. I'm going to go with Cam Jordan because I feel like people don't understand how intimidating he can be because he's arguing about whether or not Big Ben should be in the Hall of Fame and he's sending one and he's wearing yeah. the Mike Tyson cleats last week, and he's very affable in his own way. But don't get it twisted. He is the anchor of this run defense, and he has to be intimidating in this game with Sheldon Rankins being out because, yes, this Rams team is running. C.J. Anderson, Todd Gurley is probably going to have an even bigger role in this one. And without Rankins there, it has to be Cam stopping the run, and they've done that. They're the number two run defense this yeah. year, 3.6 yards per carry. The Eagles did nothing. nothing. Even when Rankins left the game, he left the game pretty early, yeah. and they could still get nothing done because of the stuff that Cam Jordan can do. And I want you guys to also know that he does have a T-shirt out. Scott. It's called the Legion of Dome, Ooh. and he is selling those everywhere in New Orleans. They it's a new thing. Right now? Cam Jordan Dome? created a shirt. It is all over. Okay. You can get it on Amazon, Bezos, all of that. <laughs> Bezos. Just, just letting oh, you know, it's not just Adam. Okay. Everybody's, Every, everybody's going back to the future because I remember when I was with the Ravens, we had the Happy Festivus shirts that we made money <laughs> off of because Brian Billick said that we couldn't talk about the playoffs. But, you know, for me, the most intimidating factor, and you said that Sean Payton's going to have this – this team on 11, well, how about this crowd that's going to be amped mm. up all day Let's hear and it, ready? I think it's going to be the Superdome is going to be the most intimidating factor because last week I, you know, you know, golf had the home cooking. I saw him going to the line. It was 15 seconds, you know, or it was above 15 seconds, and I see him listening and listening, and he's looking to the sideline and changing the plays. So he still has the training wheels on. He's getting the answers to the test from the sideline. Okay. Will he be able to get the answers to the test from the sideline if the crowd is so loud? And who's not going to get the get the check? Who's not going to get the audible? And that can cause problems because then now somebody doesn't block somebody, free runners. Will Jerry Goff be able to communicate on the road, silent counts? I know he went there before, so he should be used to it, but the playoffs is a whole nother the level. The Eagles did, uh, you know, on Thursday and Friday of the week going up, they would go inside their indoor facility and crank the volume up as loud as it could. It doesn't seem It's not the same. It's like nothing. 70,000 people plus the artificial is it really noise. Different are, up they in. play in Seattle. They play everywhere. Is the Superdome really different when you're down in the middle of than all the other loud stadiums? Well, well, it's a dome, right? So what happens is there's nowhere for the noise to escape. The good thing about Seattle is they they use the technology that it bounces up and right. bounces back mm -hmm. down so it echoes. And plus, you know, you're going to turn and pipe in some artificial. I'm not saying. Hey, I'm just saying. Here we go. Art Scott. <laughs> you ain't, cheating, job, you ain't trying. We'll be back after this. All the talk's been about.